But visible learning really is the idea of teachers seeing themselves through the eyes of the student and determining what factors influence student achievement the most and then taking that information from research, understanding effect sizes and how we can use those to improve learning and teaching and translating that into our, our practice in the classroom. So it's that idea of what makes a learner a visible learner, um, how can we be transparent in our teaching to help students become visible learners, and helping to build students so that they're assessment capable learners. And I just want to clarify because I asked an audience once recently what they think that means and they had the misconception, some of them did that, being assessment capable means um, a teacher teaching to the test and making sure that kids are uh, capable of passing those standardized tests. But this is not about test taking, it's a whole nother thing altogether. It's the idea of um, students knowing the answer to those three questions. Where am I going, which is the learning intentions. How am I going? So what steps do I need to take to get there and what success criteria will look like to know that I've made it? And then after that, where to next? So it's that idea of closing the gap between students' current level of performance and where the learning intention is, but students being aware of that. Um, so that's the definition of an assessment-capable learner. Invisible learning, Professor Hattie describes the idea that he's collected in that particular um, resource 150 different influences that impact student achievement. Those influences are looked at in different categories. For example, influences that come from the home, influences that come from the individual student, influences that might come from the teacher, the school, or the curriculum. And so those influences, John was really interested in what, you know, when starting his teaching career, there's a lot of things that we can do as teachers, and um, almost everything we do, he's found in his research, impacts student achievement. So what makes the biggest difference? So in his meta-analysis, he's taking all of those factors, and the average influence is 0 0.40. And that's what he refers to as the hinge point. This is anything that we do beyond 0 0.4, is going to increase student beyond a year because that 0.40 is what we should expect in a typical year. So we have to make sure that we give students a year's growth for a year's input. Um, anything under 0.4, sometimes we can expect that that might be developmental effects, things that would happen whether the teacher was there or not. Um, things sometimes have a negative impact like mobility and ret retention that they negatively impact students. But 95% of what we do has a positive impact. Some might be low in that scale where it might be an impact of 0 0.21, like increasing class or decreasing class size, um, 0 0.23 of homework. But some have a, a high impact like feedback, 0 0.75. So if we expect the hinge point to be 0 0.4 and we know feedback is 0 0.75, we can say that feedback can almost double the speed of learning that if we give feedback that's meaningful and according to that structure that Professor Hattie has laid out, that we know that we can get almost double a year's input for students in a year's time. So the learning intentions are meant to be shared with students in student-friendly language. They're constructed from the Common Core Standards or the curriculum, and it's teachers unpacking what the learning intention is and making that clear and explicit to students. So um, by the end of a unit or by the end of this class, what we hope you will learn is this. And so it's that idea of sharing the target. If students don't know the target, it's really difficult to hit. So making that clear, uh, making it visible, and helping students understand what that learning intention looks like, which leads to success criteria. And the success criteria often is co-constructed with students, but not always. And the idea is, if our target is A, what and how will we know we've hit that target? So again, it's identifying clearly um, the steps that are necessary in order to hit the learning intention. What I would expect to see is where students are provided with frequent opportunities to peer and self-assess. Well, you hear students talking about using that language of learning, where they're talking about the different dispositions of um, being a resilient learner, being um, someone who's persevering when they get in that pit, 
um, where learning is difficult, but finding that they are setting appropriate challenges. And so the role of the teacher in that is making sure that they foster opportunities for students to peer and self-assess, ensuring that um, the language is clear around what are the learning intentions, what are the success criteria, and where are we going next. So it always boils down to those, those three key things. Um, but I'd expect, yeah, to see a lot of uh, peer interaction, a lot of peer dialogue, a lot of students being able to articulate what they need to do, examining their own work, um, being uh, really self-reflective and self-regulatory, um, and then that language coming through.